Good evening, everybody. I'm delighted to be here. And um, I suppose it's nice to, be, nice to be working, getting paid for standing up here for a change. Um, I believe that um, every time you plan a coaching session, you should look at it as, as if you were a player. And when you have that little sheet of paper in your hand, you should view it and say, right, I'm a player. How is the session looking? And ask yourself, am I covering what the player wants? Am I covering what the player needs? And most importantly, am I covering what the player will enjoy? And that brings us to, I suppose, a game-based approach to it. And there are two sides of the game, in my opinion. There's the, the standard game where you have two teams, let it be two aside, 10 aside, 15 aside. And that's, we'll look at a little bit of that maybe tomorrow. And then you have what I believe are the specific elements of a game. I suppose something that you want to pull out of a game, an area that needs a bit of looking at, and you want to tackle it. So tomorrow, I will look at, I suppose, my, my role in my new job for a few moments, and after that, various aspects of coaching. And finally then, a practical, I suppose, take on actual team versus team, small-sided games, games approach tomorrow. So tonight, again, I'm finding difficulty seeing the slides back down there. Um, I want to look at, for a few minutes, specific elements of training and kind of have a couple of practical examples. Now, I have four little items here coming up. First one is basic striking. And I think because it's so simple, we tend to neglect it. And I'm actually delighted to see previous speaker talking about kicking in football and, and plenty of practice in kicking. I think in hurling, if you don't practice striking, the, the game stops. And so many people are trying to establish elaborate plays and elaborate drills and elaborate skills and, and they don't have the basics of striking. So I, I don't think I ever took a training session that didn't include a serious amount of striking. We looked then at a little possession game, and again, it has a purpose. And we'll look at shooting under pressure. Shooting under pressure, not wasting the ball. Player in possession has the ball and you, you don't want to waste it because you mightn't get another one. You want to develop composure for the right moment to shoot. The opposition are obviously trying to take the ball off you, so in, in this little clip, you're going to get a bit of defensive work as well. And um, the key to it is that the player wants to score. And the mentality is, this is the last ball of the game. We're down a point or we're up a point and I'm not going to get another ball. So if we waste it, it's game over. So that, that is the mentality. And then after that, I want to look at it a little bit, possibly the opposite. Surviving under pressure when in possession. You have a ball in the edge of the square. You have a ball inside the 21. What do you do with it? Do you just panic and hit it away? And what I want to look at here for a moment is um, developing, I suppose, to be comfortable on the ball and not to, not to be rash, not to just hit it out of your way, just leave it to somebody else, let it be somebody else's problem. Um, again, the opposite side of it is putting opponents under pressure when, when, when they have the ball and obviously you're, you're trying to take it from them. So the objective in, in this little clip will be um, obviously to get possession first, but then to make a long clearance. So you're inside the 21, you're inside the 14, if you just hit the ball under pressure, it's going to land out maybe on the 50-yard line where there's, there's a forward or a midfielder waiting to collect it and just pop it over the bar. So what we're looking to bring into the game, we've identified it in matches that we're, we're not able to clear long. The opposing half back line are dominating us, and we want to try and develop something that will help us to clear the opposing half back line. So the little clip in a few moments will show that, you know, whatever team gets possession first, there has to be a hand pass. And only when you can clear, we'll say 60, 70, 80, 80 meters, should you attempt to strike. So the, the first few are, and these are 16, 17 year old youngsters, and they're striking. And it's, it's very, very basic, and I think you, you couldn't do enough of it. So we're striking in one opposite one, short ones, long ones, bit of hand passing thrown in. As again, I have said it already, every single training session I've ever done in my life would have some element of, of, of what's coming up here. Now we move a little bit further apart. And again, you know, the more help you have, the better. If you have three or four or five people helping out, as you can see the lads there walking up and down the field, driving on the players, because if they're casual, it's no good. 
And, you know, the higher the grade goes, the higher the standards you're trying to achieve, you want to have it crisper and faster, crisper and faster. And um, it's very difficult to do that if you just have one, one coach. So any helpers you have, get them into the middle of the pack and spread them around. Now they're moving into longer striking and catching. And what are we looking for? We're looking for catching the ball. We're looking for players to be able to hit the ball 40, 50, 60, 70, maybe 80 metres accurately. We're looking for the players that are receiving to be able to catch it and maybe even get off the ground when they're catching it. And, you know, these are parts of the game. If you can't do them, you can't play the game. It's as simple as that. This one moves on then to where they're working in twos because, by and large, if you win a ball in a game, there's usually somebody marking you and you may not be able to deliver it. So we're kind of, you're tied to a partner. I catch it and I throw it out to my friend and he clears it and vice versa. So again, you can bring all sorts of elements into it. This one then is probably the most important of all, to, to meet the ball at pace. Because if you don't go at pace, you don't get to the ball. Your opponent passes you out and that's it. So to be able to get out of that ball at pace, at max pace, to control it at pace, and then to deliver it at pace. Now we're moving on to a little small-sided game. It's just a simple, simple possession game. Depending on the numbers you have, this could be five or six a side. And there's a, a game going on in that corner. There's another one going on in another corner, depending on how many players you have. And all I'm looking for there is strike when you're able. And if you can put three strikes together, maybe it's a score. If a strike is not on, you hand pass the ball. In other words, you're trying to develop players that you don't strike under pressure, you don't throw the ball up and let the opposition take it. This one is, um, this is for striking. We're looking for a score. So what I have here is, I've got two yellows here, two yellows diagonally over here, two blues here and two blues there, and the coach standing in the middle. So the coach will roll the ball to one player, which means they're going to get possession. So theoretically, let's say the yellows get possession. To have the ball, there has to be one hand pass, at least. So his fellow player is moving into position to, to be in position to shoot. And if the shot is not on, he doesn't take the shot. The other guy has to move again, and you keep popping passes until you get room. And needless to say, the other two fellas then are trying to close you down. In an ideal situation, it would be stalemate. A guy just won't be able to get a shot off. Now, if you think of outside in, in, in Crow Park here, on the, on the day of a match, a player gets a ball, 50, 60 yards out, gets a, gets a metre of room, and it's over the bar. So that's what's happening in this, and I'm watching the clock here now as well. Um, so we'll let that run. Now there's one or two little things going to happen here. A couple of balls are going to come into that area, and they shouldn't be there. It's, it's actually dangerous, but I left a minute. A, a player can walk on that ball very, very easily, which would be very, very foolish to, to allow it happen. So those loose balls that are lying there, they shouldn't be in there. And again, you've got to have enough stations going that the players are taxed, that they're getting enough recovery, but that they're not lying around too long. So in this situation, we have 12 on this side of the field, there's 12 on the far side of the field, and you could have another 12 down in the corner. And the clock says 1 minute 30 seconds, so we're nearly there. Next one that's coming up is going to be three opposite three. And basically, the players can stand wherever they wish. A ball is landing on top of them. Whichever player, whichever team wins it again, there must be one hand pass, right? This is it now, and we're looking for a long, a long clearance. So whatever colour gets it, there has to be a pass first just to get the game going. Now, this fellow hits it up along the sideline. If he raises that ball and just hits it, an opponent is going to get it, and it's going to be back over the bar. So he has to be composed. He has to wait for one of his own players to move into position so that he can deliver a pass, and he can then strike long. And there should be one more example of that coming up here now. And the clock is looking good at 32 seconds. So Peter would be happy. Now, here we have it again. Again, three on three. It could be two on two, four on four, whatever you wish. You're getting plenty of action. And that's it. Thank you very much.